Now I'm probably too dumb to understand this. So, you know, it doesn't mean I can't put out my th own theories of, <laughs> and you know, th that's how the idea is of exploratory minds. Um, put stuff out and people can collaborate back and say, hey, it's wrong because of, but please layman term it. Um, or reframe it, reframe your thinking. I'm typical uh, of uh, individual, many individuals like me who don't tend to think it commonly in the ways that com people commonly think. Um, at least it seems that way. That's not me trying to be egocentric or feeling special. Like I said, there's many people like me in that respect. I think the reason why is because there's many different types of intelligences rather than just a standard intelligence that is measured to fit into academic structure. There, it doesn't leave room for these others. There are others. Um, that's enough of me sounding like I'm being a self-important cocky dick. Uh, let's talk a little bit about superfluid and dark matter I always, I always did say dark matter was uh, an error in perception I thought I thought it was a illusion soon uh, saying it's a illusion uh, recently whether they change their mind again or not I don't know but uh, the amazing people at CERN are far more smarter than me, so... But, um, I could chalk one up, perhaps, and say, yeah, because, because it takes that type of... a different viewpoint, rather than just repeating what you said. You know, I have that anti-authoritarian streak in me, but, um, not to uh, the level of a detriment, though. I'm not going to take down no statues, right? The... the uh, that's all over the video of that foolishness. So, a theory on dark matter is a superfluid. I'll put a link below to a video on it to be for it to be explained. I put the video on our social pages. Uh, exploratory minds post uh, posted on my wall and one of our members said hmm this is a tough one it is a tough one and I replied back with firstly apologies long reply indeed it is a tough one but I also think they should be addressing feedback between expansion and contraction. That's important at the quantum level, at all levels really, uh, there should be, it this, this should be obvious that there's feedback and it should be used in their perspective. Maybe, it, I mean, it seems mind blowingly obvious that it should be, but I don't see it being equated, I think, sometimes. We seem to be obsessed with particle physics which I think is an expansion result because it's an outward you know get a particle you know, infinite in inward implosion in to an infinite level is you don't get an outward result you know I just let me go through this anyway uh, so Feedback between expansion and contraction should be important, giving rise to oh, what I think is boundary condition. Boundary conditions at the macro scale all the way down to the micro scale. A quantum effect makes sense if a superfluid is achieved via each point uh, being 
in balance with an equilibrium with all other points. Uh, so what happens with a superfluid, it finds balance, right? Then the, the vacuum of space as we know it, you know, this would equal vacuum of space, so all, all points in space and time, perfect equilibrium, that's why it just feels like nothing, but it's not. Um, theoretically, you know, just this is a very different viewpoint on how it tends to be termed in professional mainstream science and physics. Um, again, I'm, perhaps I'm too dumb to understand it. Uh, I just like to put this out anyway. Um, so that equals a vacuum. But even in that vacuum, there is a quantum pressure. And that is true. In the vacuum of space, there is a pressure. Um, it's detect detectable. It was detected in the in quantum field theory with the Casimir effect and the Casimir pol polder. These are named after physicist Hendrik Casimir who predicted them in 1984. The problem I have with the results is this. To quote from the book of gravity, this present day quantum field theory gets rid of by a renormalization process of an energy density that would formerly be infinite. Um, hmm. All right. So they found it would formerly be infinite if not removed by this renormalization. renormalization. Uh, so they found infinite energy in the vacuum, but plugged in an equation to cut the number, yet the results are still rid ridiculously vast. This leads to a theory of a universal field of energy, which sounds a lot like Higgs boson in many ways. Again, you know, physicists talk about finding another particle, and they talk about the boson... Higgs boson as if it was a particle, thus confusing people because it's not a localized particle like a subatomic structure, it's a field. <laughs> you know? So, but things moving through the field are given mass from the, the Higgs boson f field. Um, so, so that sounds like Higgs boson to me in many ways a universal field of energy this leads to zero point energy field um, always present due to infinite connectivity in theory or equilibrium caused causing by causing the superfluid state uh, to quote from Wikipedia, the zero point energy ZPE is it's a observed difference between the lowest possible energy that a quantum mechanical system can have um, or may have, and the classical minimum energy of the system if you are confused right now don't worry about it so am I um, zero point energy would be who else to explain that uh, it's why certain gases will not freeze because the go down to the the atom scale the atomic scale the, the spin and the energy and the whole you know just the basically the structure is why it will not crystallize to absolute you know even at absolute zero temperatures below zero Kelvin, whatever it is the ridiculously zero temperatures that and yet things still won't freeze so you know 
Um, again, you add that in, and I don't think the universe will die as a theory. Everything spreads out, and it just cools off and dies. Uh, because I think, again, you should be go going back to feedback. If we're on a trajectory in the universe, observing things, because the universe is so big, all we're going to observe if we're on an outward trajectory of a feedback between expansion and contraction at the universal scale, or all the way down to the smaller scale, what we're going to observe is things spreading apart. And But then they do say again, it's getting faster. Um, but if every, if every action has an equal and opposite reaction, then the universe is contracting at the very same time as it's expanding. If you breathe out, what do you got? You know, you've got contraction of your lungs, but you're expanding the gas outward at the same time, equal and opposite. You know, uh, the, the simplicity of Newton's cradle, a reaction has an equal and opposite reaction. People think of it as, yeah, a action has a reaction. No, that's not right. It's a equal, equal force with a simultaneous reaction with opposite, yeah, opposite reaction, opposite direction, or if you like, direction of motion, trajectory, if you want. If it confuses how, that's okay, you know, because I think so am I, but um, uh, I wonder what other people who are onto this, perhaps, or they like the superfluid theory. The video for the superfluid thing is below. I put a link below. And this is something that can be shared on the social networks uh, of uh, exploratory minds, the social pages, sorry. Um, if you wanted to, and I've put it on there, but you know, I do stress that exploratoryminds.com is a just like you know how random Twitter is and it is volatile and so on, it can be like that as well if you wanted it to. You know, just post what you want when you want. But there's groups, and we're forming groups, and we're integrating the blog with this as well. There's a group for the blog to talk about the blog and there's groups chat as well, a group chat where many people can go into uh, chat rather than just private messaging. There's several people there and you get invited into the chat. I want this, you know, this every time I upgrade and plug things in and develop this is leaning more and more towards the researchers platform. If some brain box and scientists or physicists actually joins the site in, in layman terms a, a shitload for us, that'd be cool. It'd be great to have somebody on like that. Um, you don't even get really that notice in the search engines at the moment. That's how young this project is in some ways. It's also old in some other ways, if you like. Depends how you think about timelines. Because uh, it's been around a couple of years in iterations of changing, uh, editing. I started off with, well, if you went way back when, for reality explorations, that was a website that's with these goals in mind, but I didn't have the know-how for the, for the coding and the edit editing back then. Um, or where to get the right software to install into a server. I didn't even know what a cPanel server was. Now I'm more knowledgeable and it's that old saying I wish I knew back then what I know now. But live and learn, live and learn and stay curious and collaborate with people, look for intelligent people over the internet. Uh, that's what I do in a public bar. I don't look for general bullshit banter. I look carefully for the, I listen carefully for the con conversation. And I'll 
chip in every now and then if I would like to surround myself with people who are far more intelligent than me um, which I normally think would be easy but yeah uh, surprisingly not but there's a lot of letdowns out there unfortunately um, don't mention names but I don't have that much faith in people's willingness to practice their intelligence to, to keep their mind alive and curious um, they just but there are those people out there and that's what I look for so roll on getting back to, to somewhat some kind of level of normality for the UK as well people places are opening up back up and really crushing this pandemic the spread of it really crushed it tenfold I don't see America achieving that um, yeah perhaps I do yeah I've no words for what's happening in America you just I think people many Americans and people across the world people across Europe saw it come in the warnings were out there but nobody did anything and you know for some other Americans they're shocked that this is going on but you saw it coming you saw it coming and they hated America being slated because they saw it was coming and now look at it well you know it is what it is we'll see after see what happens because you're heading for civil war Which won't last that long anyway, granted, because, you know, these people taking down statues and so on, they, they're going to be on their knees begging for leadership rather than taking down. I mean, it's, it's just, they've already lost anyway. They just don't know it yet. Um, but I hope it all settles down and corrects itself far sooner. And some lessons can be learned, hopefully, but we've heard it over and over and over. Unless you learn from your history, you will repeat it. You are destined to repeat it. And your history is being crushed, actively taking down statues that are reminders of your history. I shouldn't have to say that. You know that. This is not to say... All Americans. Um, there's many Americans who are completely appalled of what's happening. I'm appalled at how it's been allowed to progress for so long. The your activism on liber liberalism, if you will, is a mouthful. Yeah, the land of opportunity. It shouldn't be the opportunity to be an idiot. You know, only in America would you get a museum based on creationism. That would be illegal in the UK, I would have thought. Because it's abuse of education, abuse of teaching children, and so on. They try to teach kids that you they walked around riding dinosaurs on dinosaurs' backs. Wow, shocking. Thanks for watching anyway, take care. Uh, if you heard a big sneeze in the background, that was somebody who loves you. Cheers, bye.